Hi, I'm Tony Poulos at the DSP Leaders World Forum here at Windsor. We just had a fabulous session and we're going to be talking, this of course is extra shot, where we get into the nitty gritty of the last session. I have with me today Francis Hayson, who is the Principal Analyst at Apple Door Research. Welcome Francis. And Jay Bellissimo from Wind River. He's the President of Wind River. Gentlemen, thank you for being here. Look, the last session we do, we're going to talk about now is the DSP perspective, cloud native telco, empowering agility and cost optimization. Wow, it's a long title. What did you get out of the first or that particular session, Jay? Probably the biggest thing I got out of it was value creation. By having those cloud native uh, agility to get to that edge to the cloud is just a phenomenal opportunity. And we heard a lot about the different value drivers, but for me, the theme was speed. Because we can measure it with different financial KPIs, but in the end, it's really about speed and creating that value, capturing the value and delivering it to those end customers. Francis, what did you think? The thing that came across to me most compelling was actually a comment from Lisa, which was that they saw cloud native not just as the innovation. We talk about a lot of the things we could do in the future. They saw it as a fundamental thing that made their network higher quality, better able to, and more resilient. Uh, they, 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 they noted in nine years that I think they had no A level problems in the network and compared to a industry where that is a lot, lot higher. And they saw automation and software and cloud native as the key fundamentals that enable them to be there. Uh, without that automation, they're in the same boat as everybody else. Yeah, one of the things that did come up was, and one of the first points that came up was, are telcos able to align their cloud native roadmaps with their digital and business strategies? You would think that would be the first thing they'd be doing. Yes, well, it's complex, and um, I will say, in the end, I think, back to my point earlier about value creation, it's really about how do you monetize the network? And I think all the big uh, providers, CSPs, are all trying to figure out how do I capture that? Is it through network APIs, such as latency, quality of service? So I think that's a struggle, and then ultimately, tying it back to the OSS and the BSS and integrating, because integration can be a big challenge with some of these legacy systems. Is there a fear in moving to cloud native, do you think, Francis? I, I, I'm not so sure that cloud native is, um, uh, is a fear. I think it's, an actually, an, it's actually an unknown. Um, in reality, cloud native is really a software development. Right? It's a software development methodology. Um, the, the, the CSPs, uh, DSPs are, are very much in a place where to a large extent over the last 10 to 15 years, they've outsourced software development or um, the, uh, the, the, the setting of standards in this area. Cloud Native is giving them the opportunity in, uh, and Deutsche Telekom and Lisa talked about it it's at some depth of them being able to insure that kind of thing. But to some extent, they're having to relearn th uh, skills that, that they had at 10, 10 to 15 years ago, but they no longer have in the, in the organization. So that is that is inherently a scary a, 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 a scary process for for, 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 for many. So, I, I, but it's it's definitely something that that, uh, that they need to need to be involved in. I'm I'm not so sure it needs to be a completely the CSP re reclaiming all aspects of. Uh, the sort of software delivery process. It needs to be one of collaboration. Um, that, that they can't go back to the old days of a, an AT&T developing all of its own systems. And, and Tony, if, if I could just yes, um, amplify the comment, I think it's a great one. So a use case. So we're Wind River, we're owned by Optiv, who's in the automotive. They're a technology and a software company focused on automotive and other industries. And the example is, Internally, we've rolled out pipelines, the CICD pipeline, so to your point about software, Francis, and we've seen incredible returns on investment in terms of efficiency. So my point is, it's very much a software play, but in our example, we've used hundreds of pipelines, literally all the big auto OEMs, we think of Stellantis, GM, all those programs around the world we support, we've got literally every one of those programs on our whole DevSecOps software solution. So that proves that you have that cloud native, intelligent edge go fast. And the last point is, and it ties back to the infrastructure working with some of these big CSPs is over the air updates. Think of a car as a traveling data center with software. 
you have to have that continuous CI/CD pipeline going back and forth, and you need to have the connectivity to be able to do those types of updates with all, the, think of all the terabytes of data that come off of automobiles and that whole connectivity. So that's a real use case that we've been living every day at Aptiv and Wind River with many of our OEM customers. Well, now we're talking about the, the, the three famous sayings, better, cheaper, quicker, and you've given some outlines there of use cases that are happening, but what are the other benefits? Are there other benefits that are coming, coming through cloud native? If, if I, I think one of the- I'm throwing uh, that one right, right at you. You, 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 <laughs> you, you did. I, I, I think the, the biggest um, ability that cloud native is, is actually it makes partnership and integration actually potentially easier. I don't say it, it inherently in, uh, enables them, but it makes it a lot easier. It enables you to combine things from others, um, to share insights, in a much more collaborative way. The development, the development process, the combination with the operations process is inherently a much more collaborative rather than a kind of throw it over the wall opportunity. So the, the underlying methodology, I think, gives a lot of opportunity for that kind of collaboration and breaking down walls. And what most importantly, re, re, reuse uh, within, the, within the network. One of my biggest worries actually about um, some of the inshoring techniques from the, uh, from for example, Deutsche Telekom was mentioning, is we need we need to look not just at how much it takes us to develop the day one solution, but actually what is the ongoing cost of us actually maintaining this day two, day day n, etc. Because things will change, you have to constantly uh, try solution. Cloud native gives you a much more flexible solution. It enables you to potentially build things that are a lot less brittle. OSS is all age old problem was brittle systems where the operational process could not change as the network changed or the, as you introduce IPM PLS, you make it look like SDH because the operational processes can't change. Cloud native can change that. Well, I'm glad I caught you out with that one. You answered <laughs> brilliantly. Jay, would you like to add to that before we close I, I, I would just say, you're either going to be a, a first mover or a fast follower, I think you'll get left behind. So I, I agree with many of Francis's points, but it all comes back to value creation. What is the differentiation? What, if that's not a, 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 a fact to get moving, I don't know what else is. It's a very competitive environment, and if you want to differentiate, show the value, capture the value, and lastly, which is probably the hardest part, to go back to your earlier question, is you have to accelerate time to value. Yes. And so those are the right value attributes, but I think in the end, you really have to think about from a corporate perspective, do you want to be that first mover or are you going to follow quickly? And if you don't do either, I think you're going to be left behind. Jay Francis, thank you very much for being with me today. Uh, that's another extra shot we've got through. And uh, for viewers at home, don't forget, if you do miss any of our sessions, we have everything uh, on demand uh, through Telecom TV. And if you've got any other questions, please send them in to us. You know where to look, it's on your site. Thank you very much for being with us.